Hey guys, Chris Reiber here. Welcome back to the Hobby Room. A couple of you guys out on the forums and videos asked how to set up an Icon or an MSH brain. So I've got my buddy's T-Rex 500 here. It's got a Spectrum radio. So we are gonna go over a setup on how to set it up. Enjoy. All right guys, so first thing you're gonna do, whether you're flying uh, Spectrum, Futaba, Jetty, you're gonna to wanna to set up a new helicopter. So in our case, we're using Spectrum. So we have a brand new model. We want to go down here to system setup model type helicopter yes reset it you can set your model name swash type is normal because it's a computer gyro all done in the radio f mode setup this is your flight mode switch i always use this three position switch and then hold I prefer the front one. Some people like the back one. Doesn't matter which one you do. Set your hold switch because you will need hold so that you can um, work inside the icon. Really big one, trim setup. This is a digital gyro. It is not a flybar helicopter. We want all trims to zero. This is very important. Basically what we did was we just locked out the ability to use these trims. All right, servo setup. We'll go through this when we get inside the icon. Dual rates and expo. I don't do anything with those. I don't assign them to a switch. I don't set expo or rates. Um, I have everything in the icon. I just choose on the flight characteristic I want, and it adds a you know dual rates and expo for me. Throttle cut, throttle curve. We're not going to do anything to this pitch curve. We're going to leave all this alone. Gyro. We do want to turn on gyro. We're going to tie it into our bank switch. So we have a three position switch. Yes. Boom. Now I got control of the three flight mode gyro settings. Timer. You know, set your timer to whatever you want. All right, so that's it for basic radio setup. We've, we've turned off these trims so they can't do anything. We're in helicopter mode, uh, normal swash plate, dual rates and expos off. We've got our throttle hold. We have our bank switch. And that's about it to get started. Let's uh, get the icon plugged in and uh, updated. Okay guys, at this point, we just want to power the icon or brain through the USB port so we can start talking to the computer. We do not want to power up the servos yet. Okay guys, so first thing you want to do after you hook it up and you plug in your uh, brain or your icon is if it's new out of the box or if it needs a firmware update, it's going to ask for it and just click OK and let it update all its firmware. Okay, so depending on the internet speed in your home, the firmware update download can take anywhere between two to five minutes. For me, it took about three minutes. I just didn't want you guys staring at the taskbar going up. Um, give it time to erase the settings, rewrite them, and check everything. You always want to fly your helicopters with the most up-to-date firmware for any changes the factory might have made to improve the software. Okay guys, so the first screen is a general instruction screen. This is just where you're gonna choose your model. You're gonna type in what type of blades you have, motor, ESC, servos, transmitter type. This is just when you plug the model in, you know you're connected to the correct model and you know you're not in demo mode. So fill in the information, it's kind of nice. You'll always keep track of you know what's inside the model.
Okay guys, so the next screen is your fly wireless unit orientation. This tells the helicopter later on how to correct for its control inputs. For me, I chose top up wires front. So choose what best suits your helicopter mounting type. So next we're choosing receiver selection. For us, we're using Spectrum 2 DSMX satellites. So we're gonna choose that and we're gonna click on the bind. Once you click bind, it's gonna close out the program. Your transmitter will be in bind mode, ready to go. From there, you're going to unplug power to the icon, cycle it back on, wait for it to blink, and then hit the bind button on your radio. Okay guys, so once we are bound, we're gonna open the software back up, make sure all our settings we've done so far are saved and we're talking to the fly barless system. The next screen we're gonna go on to teaches you where to plug into servos, what are servos one, two, three, and tail servo, where they plug into the fly barless unit. Also tells you where to plug in the ESC and BEC. So mark those down. I like to write them on the servo so I don't forget what's what. All right, now we're moving on to probably the most important part of setting up this fly barless system. It's the only time we're really gonna be inside the radio messing with anything later on after the setup other than adjusting tail gains after your first couple flights. So here on a transmitter setup, we are setting our direction on our sticks. Left is left, right is right, forward, forward, etc. This is the only time you're gonna to touch stuff in the radio. So if your left and right are backwards, simply go into servo reverse and change them. You want to make sure everything's moving in the correct direction. If not, just reverse it. Once we know our directions are correct, we want to set the travel. So basically what we're doing is we're teaching the icon where full 100% travel is inside the radio. So you'll go to your endpoints, go that stick input direction. Here I'm doing left aileron. And you just slide it up to see 100%. Then you do full right. You go full forward, full backwards. You want to go full positive negative pitch full tail until you get 100%. Now on the throttle, I'm flying Governor, which has a castle on this ESC, so that's set at 30, 70, and 100. You only need to set the throttle endpoints if you're gonna use the internal icon Governor, which I'm not, so I'm fine there. And then after you set your directions and your endpoints, you're gonna to wanna to go into your gyro channel, which I have on my bank switch, and we're gonna to wanna to set all three banks to 45% for the icon. So next we're gonna choose our tr swash plate type. Most of them are 120. Choose if your elevator is in front or back, and if you have clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. From there, we move on to the servo setup. Choose what type of servos you have. What's nice is they have a pull-down chart for both cyclic and tail servos. Input your hertz and frequency level, and then now we're gonna power up the helicopter and get this thing going. Please be safe and always unplug your motor wires so you don't get an accidental spool up during the setup process. Now that we have power to the servos and we told it the orientation, we have to make sure all cyclic inputs are moving in the correct direction. On the next screen, we cannot adjust anything or get center dead band of the stick without setting on throttle hold. Once you put throttle hold on, you'll notice we have a dead band in the center and you can start setting up your directions. If your swash play is not moving correctly, quickly hit the servo reverse until you get the right combination to where everything's moving in the correct directions. So now the helicopter knows the orientation of the fly barless system. 
we know everything's working in the correct direction. Now we need to center the servo arms at 90 as well as level the swash plate. By doing this and having your links mechanically built to the manual specs, when we're done with this step and we're at that dead band, we should have zero pitch on the blades. Now we are gonna set our positive and negative pitch ranges. Some people fly 12 degrees, some people 14 degrees. I personally like 13 degrees of pitch. When I'm setting a helicopter up for somebody, I like 12.5. It's a good combination of, you know, not too little pitch, not too much pitch. So here you're simply going to go to full stick and then in the icon program, you're going to click plus or minus until you're on 12.5 degrees of pitch or whatever your selected pitch is. And then you'll go negative pitch, same thing. Make sure they match up and move on to the next step. So the last part of the screen is the cyclic throw. Icon and brain wants to see 10 degrees. So you're going to go full right aileron and quickly move the slider up or down until you get 10 degrees of pitch at full aileron deflection. We're getting close now, guys. The next screen is our tail servo. So make sure you check that it's moving in a correct direction. Here it was wrong. So I simply, simply hit servo reverse. Once it's moving in the correct direction, I want to set full stick deflection. So basically go full left stick and move the plus and minus until the servo starts to bind and then back it down a few clicks. Then you go full right tail input, same thing, go maximum deflection. Once the servo starts to bind, pop it back a few clicks. So on the next screen is our blade size selection. This is a two blade helicopter and it's swinging 425 millimeter blades. By selecting this size, it automatically sets the pre-gains in the head that the helicopter should be flying at, which you can see pretty darn close without any tuning. Next screen is the auto level screen. If you choose to use the auto level or the rescue screen, this is where you set them up on what banks and when you want to use it, what switch. I'm not going to cover that. There's awesome videos out there to learn how to set up rescue on these helicopters. This next screen is a governor screen. If you choose to use an icon or brain governor, if not, just skip this screen if you're using something like a castle or a hobby wing external governor. Here we choose a flying style, beginner, sport, acro, and 3D. What's nice here is a flying style is automatically adding your rates and expo for you. If you want to change the agility, you've got the sliders right there if you want to kind of tweak it. And you can put this on bank switching so you can have, you know, one bank sport mode, one acro, one 3D. So kind of play around with that. See what you prefer and how you like the helicopter flying. And lastly, check orientation. Make sure everything is correcting in the right movements. And then go made in it, guys. Okay, guys, I just want to go through all the menus real quick with you one more time. Here is you're just going to put in all your information. That way, when you pop it up, it'll save it. You're going to set your orientation of how your fly barless system is mounted on the helicopter here. Next, you're going to choose what type of receiver type you have that you're going to be using with an icon or brain. Here, this tells you how you're going to plug your servos into what ports, what servos 1, 2, 3, where you plug in your ESC, BSC. All right, here is where you want 100% throws on everything, 45% on gyro, and all directions moving in the correct orientation. Next, you're going to choose your swash plate type and what type of rotation you have. Choose what type of cyclic and tail server you have. What's nice is they added a little chart, so pull it up, find your frequency and hertz levels. After that, you're going to power the system up, you're going to level your swash plate, check your pitch, check your cyclic, make sure everything's moving in the correct directions, you got your correct pitch. 
Next, you're going to make sure your tail servo is moving in the correct direction and set your endpoints. Next, you're going to choose what type of blade type you have. Two blade, three blade, fly bar. Uh, you're going to choose what blade size. This is automatically going to do your gains and your rates. Here is where you would set up your rescue feature and self-level if you're going to use that. The next screen is if you're going to use the icon and, and brain governor. If you're not going to use it, if you're going to use the internal governor like the castle, hobby wing, ignore it. Next, you're going to choose your flying style. This is going to add your rates and expo for you, and you can you adjust your agility as well. And you can actually do bank switching, so you can have different banks for you know sport, acro, 3D. And next, you're just going to check that everything's moving in the correct direction, and go put a mate on your new bird. Hey guys, I just want to say thanks for watching. I hope this cleared up any confusion you might have had with the MSH brains and icons. Um, I just want to tell you, if you built everything correctly, arms are at 90s, and you built these all the factory specs, when you get to doing your positive negative pitch, that screen, everything should be perfectly zero when everything's 90 and flat in the swash plate. When you get to that dead band in the center of the stick, when you're at that dead band, zero pitch should be perfect if all this is built correctly. Have fun, and until next time guys, Fly safe.